ships, trains and planes. Essential elements in today's global, just-in-time economy. Industries that use radioactive materials are particularly dependent on this system. That's because radioactive materials are used in every country in the world, but produced in only a few. It's also because radioactive materials are perishable. When problems arise with the transport system, the consequences can be serious. Recently, the coronavirus pandemic led to significant problems in the supply chain of what the United Nations categorizes as Class 7 dangerous goods. Delivery of radioactive materials is time sensitive. That's particularly the case for materials used in medicine. At the start of the pandemic, due to the grounding of passenger aircraft, many countries, both wealthy ones and not so wealthy ones, were denied access to the medical isotopes that they needed. Supply improved within a few weeks in most places, but in certain areas, notably in Central America, the problems have persisted for months. Here, literally thousands of patients are waiting for diagnosis and treatment of diseases such as cancer. Patients are waiting for treatment and some of them are dying because they're not receiving uh, the, the necessary treatment. The disruption to Class 7 during the pandemic has been made worse by a long-standing problem facing industries using nuclear technologies. The refusal by commercial carriers, ports and handling facilities to deal with radioactive materials, an issue referred to as denial of shipment. There is many reasons to create a denial of shipment. You have a, a lack of knowledge in nuclear materials. You have a fear of an accident, of an incident. You have misinformation from time to time from anti-nuclear groups. So there is many, many reasons which can lead to a, a denial of shipment. The consequences of such denial can indeed be serious, and not just during a pandemic. The International Irradiation Association represents the radiation processing industry. This uses cobalt-60, produced in only five countries for the sterilization of 40% of the world's single-use medical devices, like latex gloves, surgical gowns and implants. Well, if a shipment is, is denied or simply delayed, then access to sterile medical devices can be curtailed. And ultimately, that means that patients may not get treated. The issue was officially recognized by the International Atomic Energy Agency in 2003, when it began to coordinate global efforts to address the denial of shipments. Among the initiatives it encouraged member states to develop were national focal points. They have a critical role to play uh, in terms of addressing issues of denial. They have the, the knowledge, the understanding, the appreciation of the importance of radioactive material and the need to ship Class 7 material. They have the relationships and hopefully they have the authority. A good example of a country in which having an NFP has made a difference is Brazil. What they did is very remarkable in, in Brazil because they, re, they, they succeeded to have a, a, a group of people really committed in the, the National Focal Point first, then the, the Nuclear Safety Authority. They have uh, raised up a scientific committee. They have regular meetings with uh, forwarders, with the port, airports, authorities. And I think this is a key of, uh, of the success of uh, an, having less and less denial of shipment. National focal points could also coalesce into regional networks. At their height, there were more than 70 national focal points around the world. And they were very successful in addressing denial of shipments uh, on a domestic basis. But also these national focal points linked up with neighboring contact points and became a very powerful network the value of these focal points was again demonstrated during the pandemic when passenger air transport was curtailed. In the IAEA member states which had already established NFPs, 
the networks and the relationships with carriers and airports were in place. This put countries in a better position to address the challenges. It's a team uh, business. You, know, you cannot solve these problems alone. It's, it's really difficult. But you need somebody as a sort of referent where all the problems are coming and we, we will try to solve this. The IAEA is now repeating its call to all 172 of its member states to establish focal points. That's because the position remains that the vast majority of countries have not yet appointed an NFP. The pandemic has provided a cruel reminder about the vulnerability of supply chains for radioactive materials. It is time for all member states to seriously consider a national focal point to boost the security of supply of goods that are vital to our economies and healthcare systems. As an association, we absolutely agree that the IAEA um, should endeavour to implement national focal points within all of their member states. I look forward and I hope that uh, they will take the best measures to impose or to suggest uh, to the countries, um, to the member states of the IAEA to, to really take care of this problem, appoint a, nuclear, a national focal point. And, uh, and try to solve uh, these problems. There needs to be greater coherence in the understanding of what the challenges are in transporting class seven materials, particularly as it relates to radioisotopes. Um, the people's lives are at stake. And if there is a national focal point, I think we may make some progress in, in the areas where we've been struggling for many years. <laughs>